Um, first, like my colleague, I want to thank the campaigners in the gallery, uh, to whom we owe a debt because we wouldn't be discussing this tonight were it not for the hard work that they've done and their insistence on ensuring that this came to the House and that we on this side of the House do our best to support and argue with that side of the House to really take this issue very, very seriously. I also want to salute the courage and the determination of the young people in Calais and indeed of all refugees who have managed to make it here to Europe. They have resisted and struggled in the most appalling conditions and against incredible inhumane odds have, uh, have made it here to Europe and are looking for our assistance on a humanitarian level. Um, first of all, given the scale of the crisis in Cali and indeed across Europe, um, the figure of accepting 200 minors should be for us more symbolic than anything else. We should, of course, uh, take these unaccompanied minors after the French government have destroyed the camp, but we need to do more, much, much more, on all of the associated issues around the devastation and humanitarian crisis uh, for refugees right across Europe. Um, the discussion tonight highlights one simple truth, and that is that the record of this and past governments on refugees is simply appalling and an eternal shame to this country. Time after time in this House, we've witnessed government ministers hide behind various excuses, sometimes administrative devices, to justify what is a callous and inhumane policy. And here I want to refer to the Minister's statement. I wasn't in the House for it, but I've read it, where she says that the government intends to continue with its efforts to increase the intake from relocation companies of unaccompanied minors. If it emerges from Calais over the coming weeks that Ireland is a genuine location of choice of some of these young people and our assistance is requested, we can of course respond in a humanitarian and proactive way. Well, it has emerged that there are hundreds of minors in Calais. It has emerged via the workers in the gallery who have uh, given up their own personal lives and sometimes their own professional lives to work with those children, that Ireland is indeed a country of choice. And what really this statement should be saying is it has emerged that people want to come here and we will work with those who are conduit to those young people to make sure they come here and that they're protected. Um, the facts speak for themselves. In the face of an unprecedented humanitarian crisis, uh, we have accepted very, very few um, refugees. We have promised to take 4,000 and to date we have accepted 500 under the resettlement programme and 69 under the relocation programme. Over 600 children have died making the crossing in the Mediterranean this year alone. In 2015, over a million people, many of whom are fleeing the conflict in Syria, risked their lives in the hope of finding safety. Children make up 40% of people forcibly displaced worldwide, and most of them are unaccompanied. Since 2015, 10,000 unaccompanied children have disappeared in Europe, and between January and August of this year, 16,000 unaccompanied children arrived in the shores of Italy alone. And so this is not an accident or a complex uh, set of issues that are involved in this. What is happening is actually a policy of Europe, whom at the same time we eulogise for having this great movement of labour. Uh, people would have been at the discussion on Brexit this morning. At the same time, implement a fortress Europe policed by Frontex and often met with horrendous cruelty to immigrants. So there's a real contradiction in how we treat human beings. Um, we have to guarantee, this government has to guarantee, as is said by previous deputies, that no minor we take in, and I, I'm hoping, and everyone is hoping, that we will take in this meagre 200, will be placed in direct provision. It's a system that has driven people to suicide, and where families live in one room on 19 euro a week with no ability to cook for themselves. It's a system labelled by the, U, the United Nations Human Rights Commission as a violation of human rights. Throughout Europe and Britain, we have witnessed the most shameful abuse and racist lies directed at refugees, and specifically those from Islamic backgrounds. From the appalling racism of Theresa May's government across the water, to the smears and lies of the Tory government, onto the state-sponsored racism in France itself. When history is written, it will be the record of when Europe faced one of the greatest humanitarian crises since the Second World War that it completely failed with indifference and hand wringing a crisis caused by the actions of Western powers and the imperial game played around the world. 
and the Irish state will be compliant with that unless we begin to open our borders and let them in. This contrasts very strongly with the response of ordinary people after the death of the young, Turkish boy, uh, the young Kurdish boy on the Turkish coast a year ago, and hundreds and hundreds of people uh, indicated a strong willingness to open their homes and are doing so again. And I think we have to listen to the people instead of listening to bureaucracy. Lastly, I want to address the argument often heard outside this House and inside this House and was referred to earlier on by some other deputies. We need to look after our own. We can't look after the Irish homeless, the Irish jobless and the Irish poor. But this is not a poor country. What's wrong with this country is it's grossly unequal. Our record on accepting refugees is at present appalling. Our record on looking after our own is also appalling. The reason our health and our housing crisis is in such a state is not because of refugees, it's because of the inequality that lies at the heart of our economic and social model. We have a government incapable of providing social housing for over 140,000 families and I believe that that figure has risen in the latest uh, figures that have been done. Funding cannot be found because the political will is not there to find it. Instead, we have an ideological reliance on the free market. So refugees are not and will not be the cause of any flaws or failings in how we provide for what we call our own. But I want to make a wider argument that in light of this and many other crises that we face in the next decade or so, we will see many more refugees and we must challenge the kind of racism and indifference that we have witnessed to date to this crisis. Refugees fleeing war, climate change and imperial aggression and above all a worldwide economic system that breeds war and inequality. And it's ultimately that system that can't and won't look after our own, as we uh, prefer to call them. And I want to argue here that refugees are our own, and that I and tens of thousands of ordinary people in this country have more in common with the refugees in Calais or those fleeing the ISIS, uh, the ISIS fights across Iraq or the US or Russian bombings in, in uh, Syria than we have with a small, wealthy cabal at the top of this society. Refugees don't just bring empty bellies, they bring hands, they bring brains and they bring ability and talent which will make our society much the richer for having them. So I welcome this discussion, it's a debate that we need to have more of and at the start of this campaign we want this government to fulfil its commitment and to acknowledge that it too has a responsibility to refugees today and in the future.